we are never reading those two fairy books. Never, ever are we reading those two fairy books. All that glows and incarnate. That's just not happening. I can't see it. Definitely can't see this. No, for we've us. lied to ourselves. Look at it. it. That is an artifact of time gone. Hey, it's Maddie. And V, and today we're going to be going through the shelves behind us and making some cuts. We've done unhauls in the past, but there have always been books that we've kept purely for the sake of. Well, it's just a record that we've read them if we have them. There's a lot of stuff from when we first started our YouTube channel back in 2014, 2013. And honestly, we don't have any plans to read those books in the future. So it's all in attempts to make these shelves something that we would want to keep for the rest of our lives. Things that we can see ourselves returning back to again and again. And creating more of our life's library because there's no need to have lots now because we'll always be buying more books. <laughs> books it's like you enjoyed it when you first read it but you know if you read it again you won't be able to replicate that experience because it's not going to mean the same thing to you and what if you end up not liking it i feel like that's what stops me from rereading some of my older older favorites so step one is going to be taking out all of the books or just like moving them forward on the shelf that we love and that we would never get rid of because then we can see what percentage of the shelves that is and it will mean that we can focus on the areas where there's like a big chunk of nothing standing out. Okay, so we're definitely not going to get rid of the Geek Girl series so I'll pull her forward. Okay, yikes, nothing more on that shelf. We definitely won't get rid of that. Nope. Or these. Reading this on the listening to it on the way back from university, like going home and just listening to it in the car. That's like just such a nice. But I think those memories are equally as valuable as know, the quality of the don't book. Have photos of those memories. No. So it's like those memories are literally within the pages of that book. I have lost my way. We loved. And the names they gave us. Those. Emmy and Oliver. Though I need to reread it. I remember really liking If I Was Your Girl. I thought about rereading this one soon. This is the definition of silly fun, and I won't be shamed for it. <laughs> I couldn't get rid of these. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to get rid of my little Flee the Sales trilogy either. Anything from the top floor? <laughs> the top floor. <laughs> uh, this one. It's not no penthouse up there. <laughs> Where are you looking at so we I'm can... I'm looking at the other Juno Dawson ones we have. Okay. For some reason Queen is down here, which I would definitely say. Yeah. Because um, that was like our favourite. And again, another really good memory of like an audiobook listen of this. Yeah. On a nice day trip. I... Precious. Oh my gosh, how really did I miss really that? <laughs> and to be fair, all of the Sarah Bernard ones as well, because I've already unhauled the one of hers that I didn't the like. like yeah. um, so these are already like the best. I think as well we felt like such an alliance to UKYA authors, like yeah. I wanted to have a large collection. I'd say Take a Chance on Me is definitely my favourite. Yeah, of course, but I wouldn't get rid of this original series, like mm. it's just so charismatic and, and fun. Like I sometimes, I feel like I often read a lot of serious contemporaries um, that I underplay how much I enjoy just like a silly fun read and that's kind of what Geek Girl was as well. Yeah. Um, so those are the gems of the bookshelf. What about those Holly Jackson ones? Yeah, I would keep these because mm. they were really good. I agree with all of these picks here. Only Love Can Break Your Heart was one of my favourite books of the year, so I'm not, definitely not getting rid of that. And Letters to the Lost as well for the same reason. Didn't get rid of the, the Jeff ones as well. That's my leader sales, I guess. <laughs> this doesn't feel like my domain, these shelves. This feels like mm. a different person's reading pace. Collection. Yeah. Get rid of the rest because I don't often care for prequels, but I would definitely not touch them in the Chronicles series. And yep. Invictus was really great. Definitely. What if I told you you can only keep two series? Which would be the I'd ones say that you... we're not playing that game. We're just taking a step back now and sort of deciding what we're going to do next. And I think I'd be more inclined to keep books by authors who I've already pulled something out from mm. to, to keep their collections of books, like do not separate them sort yeah. of thing. Um, but I think for the authors where I haven't pulled out any of their books, they're the ones at risk yes. for getting rid of because 
I like completing a collection so it is nice to have a full bibliography. So for example Laura Wood, I haven't picked out either of her books as definitely wanting to keep. This one is 1920s and this one is 1940s historical. This one is kind of Great Gatsby inspired and I really don't like Gatsby so why I've kept on to this I don't know. And this one I've kept because it's so much to do about nothing retelling and that's my favourite Shakespeare so. And this one that I was keeping because it was about music and UKYA so very similar to the thing that Maddie and I have written ourselves and I'm pretty sure this is dedicated yeah happy out lovely to meet you which is so dangerous if you haven't read a book don't get it signed to you uh, because then it's much harder to get rid of um but I feel like I'd just take out that dedication and maybe move this one along that is probably one of the first trilogies that we read yeah the thing is I feel like I've read this plot in fan fictions mm. it feels there aren't werewolves in it but tell me why it feels like there was this is like the what definition. does it even mean like how is it three books this is the thing I, know, I, I, I think of the plot in my head and I'm like how did that span a whole trilogy this is the definition of how trilogies were built like a really solid world -building beginning romance then a random book in the middle where they just have to cross a desert or cross some large expanse piece of land for no reason yeah and then an ending where they end up together and they explain it in some unreasonable scientific yeah. way. This this is like kind of sci-fi. Mm. So why did I read it in the first place? The thing is, I was never personally connected to it, but it connected me to BookTube. So yeah. that's one of the ones that has to go. And I feel like I can similarly say that. I was going to say about Ruby Red. About the Ruby Red trilogy. Yep. Time travel, sci-fi, it's just not really our thing, is it? Yeah, no, especially historical. Like, I don't really, I don't really care. I remember the specific moment when Booktube were talking about these, but it's like, I don't need the books to be able to remember that. I think, actually, maybe I do keep the books because I'm scared that the people that read them at the time that I was reading them will, like, private their videos, and then you'll just never have access to, like, the thoughts that you saw at the time. If we had to move from this house to another one, I feel like these wouldn't make the cut then yes. so they shouldn't just stay in this house now yeah and you were the one that read the chatty series yeah so do you think that we can say goodbye to this now? i think so i've i've said all i need to say about it and my feelings hadn't changed since the first yeah. time i read it look at us go we're taking out whole <laughs> chunks there's a gap in that shell we could probably get rid of xena i really love um, yeah that bookmark is from when i was reading it where did i get up to uh, you got up to page 232. Right, can't see myself going back to that. No. Again, it's sci-fi, which we just don't read. Mm. I really support the hustle of the authors that wrote it, but it's just not our taste. Oh, we've been going back and forth Bees. on those. I've read this one and you haven't. Yeah. And I read this in one of our, I think, the Blue Shelf Readathon. Yeah. Um, didn't think much of it. And then Unconventional also. I liked it, but I think I was just keeping it because of the fun setting and like the fandom element. They're not standout books, either of them for me. Um, as much as I enjoyed them at the time, I don't think that they are like books that I would want to keep, even though both were like fun reads. It's the same uh, font as Rainbow Rowell books. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Is it Osborne? Yeah. Ah, the Osborne so, font. The Osborne is font. excellent. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Anna and the French Kiss font as well. Undercover Princess. Um, I've read actually a couple of times. I read it when we first had the proof, which is this. And then I read it again when I got proofs of like the other two books in the series. Um, but still didn't really like it as much as I really wanted to. So this can come off the shelves. Yeah, see, this is one that I really, really liked when I read it, but now I can't remember what I liked about it. Like I had quite a strong reaction. Like, I didn't yeah, like it. And then you didn't like it. So maybe it was your opinion that affected how I felt about it. So yeah, I'm kind of ambivalent now. These are like the horror ones. And I really enjoyed Say, Say Her, her Name. Say the best one. I think this is yeah. the one that I would keep, but then the other two, sure, maybe not. This is what the file is looking like so far. Um, Louise O'Neill is another author that they were really powerful reads but definitely not the kind of book that you could reread no so and if i did i think i would get them from a library i don't yeah. think i really care about having them in my collection great we're agreed these can also go um yeah. but because we went to events with these books i do still have a memory of them yeah so that was a really great event it was so i would get rid of this one the one memory of flora banks by emily barr because i remember this being this is also 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I remember this just being a little phase on BookTube where people were reading it. Was it in Zoella's book club or something? Yeah, maybe. We can no, get rid of it. No, it can just be a moment. Fish Out of Water by Natalie Whipple. I read this on a blue read all day. Um, and I liked the majority of it, but then I felt like some parts of the representation were really problematic. So this is going to go. I like to carry on. I, w I won't be reading the sequel or I don't care about the franchise of Carry On. So yeah. This yeah, is we, me as well. We could get rid of this one. Can go? Yep. I did read you read one that recently. one recently and I read, read that, that one. <laughs> one recently. They can go. Oh, it's just getting rid of the cute spine colours, isn't it? Which is... Yeah, I know. But we don't, we don't need to be like that, Mads. Anna and the French Kiss. Let's unpack that. Their pivotal moments, like buying them because they were like first YA series and first big booktube contemporary series. But I'll never, ever, ever reread these again. And you did. And... I don't know, I feel like I keep them every single time, mm. but they're not a reflection of my tastes. I would definitely get rid of Isla. I find that she's the one that I don't have any attachment to, and that's what my reread proved. Right. That's just keeping it for the sake of having a trilogy, so definitely ditch her. Yeah. Um, Lola was actually like my favourite book. Mm. Are you ever going to read them again, do you think? It's so weird that these are blurbed by Cassandra Clare, like that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Alex Approximately by Jen Bennett. I really, really enjoy Night Owls, but I don't have any of her other books. So it's not like I'm padding out a collection. I didn't particularly enjoy this one, so I feel like I can get rid of it. Get rid of it. <laughs> yep. Because there's some authors that I liked before, but I probably won't buy their books again, like Morgan Matson, unfortunately. Mm. Um, Would you get rid of The Unexpected Everything? I'd get rid of this copy of The Unexpected Everything, yeah, because... You've got the hardback of it. I've there. got the hardback of it, and I didn't really care for it that much. What do you think of My Life Next Door? That's one of the oldest books on, on this, this shelf. shelf. This is like the first US paperback we ever had. Mm. I liked the story more than you did, I think. I, I think I read them on a holiday, mm. along with a bunch of other Casey West books. Yeah, no, no. ditch it, I guess. <laughs> it's not very us anymore, I don't think. No. Rebel has survived every single unhaul we've done. Yeah. And B has put it in plastic bags to go to charity shops. And then last minute, I will fish it out for <laughs> conference. You did. I think it's, it's become like, did you finish the series? Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. I did. I do know what happens. And it's it's devastatingly disappointing based on how lovely and cool this first book was. Six years old. Six years old. Almost seven. Oh, but this is like Gallagher Girls adjacent. I think that's mm. why I Yeah, you liked it as much. It. The hardback nice underneath. No. Girls I also kept. It's not like I'll read the next book in the series. So... Just say goodbye. Bye. Queens of Geek, Geek you can say goodbye too. Yeah. Eliza and her monsters was good, so I'd still keep those. These... You can unhaul both of those. Them. Nowhere on Earth was relatively recent in terms of like some of these have been on the shelves for years. I think I always have trouble getting rid of books that I have I've bought recently, bought recently mm -hmm. in terms of like the last 12 months. Um, and I... Unlike these other books where sometimes they can be on the shelves for like a year, a year and a half before I even read them. So at that point, I don't feel bad about unhauling them because mm. um, they've had time on the shelves. But this one, I bought it. I read it within two months. And then and then what do you do? Because if it's not remarkable in your mind, yeah. do you just get rid of it immediately and then it feels like a waste? Goodbye. This will feel like um, an actual demon has left me <laughs> when I unhaul this. Because I can't believe that I had it for so long and then read it. And it's like, no, I don't need it as a trophy that I've read it. The trophy can be getting rid of it. How do we manage to get rid of so much every time we unhaul? We always think we're done. Quick fire round. I'm going to get rid of Red Queen, Children of Blood and Bone, because I don't plan on reading the sequels. No, if I do, from it will be from a library, so there'd be no point keeping it anyway. You said that you didn't really like Warcross. Is that one that you'd want to get rid of? Uh, but then I feel like I've got all of Marilu's other books. Is that done? You bought this one for me. I did. Because I thought you would like it and then you didn't. Right, we can definitely get rid of the jewel because we both hated the first one when we read it. We, we I don't know what do came over me. I a don't series know. review and then so we bought the whole thing and then we read this and we were like, absolutely not. I don't know what came over me and why I liked it so much. You know, I think I was reading it at a very vulnerable time. It was during second year at Christmas 
and I just wanted to be home. <laughs> it's, I just wanted the selection again. <laughs> it all boils down to that. Well, look at those piles. That is crazy. That is 54 books that we've taken off the shelf. That's a year's worth of reading. I know that someone, oh God. That's more than a year's worth of reading. That's like two years of reading for me. Okay, we quickly went through the books we had on our more historical section and we've gotten rid of these. So The Diviners by Libba Bray. I'm starting to get age spots because I've had this since 2013. <laughs> Yeah, that's so old. Before I let go, which you bought, then read, then didn't like it and didn't want to get rid of it immediately. <laughs> Authors I no longer want to support, so they're all gone. Ruby Kagwa, Forever Song. This is the third book, hideous cover by the way, third book in her Vampire series, which I actually really, really enjoyed. I read this when we were on holiday with Sarah yeah. and I really, really loved those books. So if they Why were really more aesthetic, if they were more aesthetic, then I'd have them, but. You should be equally as excited to read all of the things, right? Yep. I'll never read this one because it's um, historical and from a boy's point of view. Gross. I really hated History is All You Love Me, but the... Hmm. They both die at the end, so... I don't know why I think I'd like that. <laughs> I don't know why I think I'd like that. <laughs> uh, we'll keep it for now. It's, got, it's an interesting format. Dry, I read 70 pages of and didn't like it, but it, I bought it too recently to unborn <laughs> it at the time. It has to go then. It has to go in the new rules. Nowhere Girls, the thing is... Oh no, look at that font. You were going to read that for your dissertation, weren't you? But then yeah. you never ended up doing it. And I that's never ended up doing it. And now, I, and now I can't see myself ever wanting to read a book like this. Yeah, because of your dissertation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anything that's even remotely related to uni and what I did there. One of us, have I read this? What? What is this? Sequel to One of Us is Lying. Is it? Yeah. You read the other one, her, what was it? Oh, called? I read the standalone one. Two, of us, two, two can keep a secret. secret. That's also blue, so I can see why you'd be confused. I'm very confused. Oh, well, we'll keep it and see. We are never reading those two fairy books. Never, ever are we reading those two fairy books. All that glows and incarnate. That's just not happening. I can't see it. <laughs> I definitely can't see this. No, for we've us. lied to ourselves. Look at it! it. That is an artifact of time gone. I think Ryan You've Gordon's still got come the into her when own. you bought it. Okay. Uh, but it came out in 2014. Mm. Although from this cover, I it would have said 2009. <laughs> 2009. Yeah, I'll just never read it. Okay, we'll cover that. Oh, this one was like the oldest book on my TBR forever. What? 78 books is the final number that we are purging from the shelves. <laughs> This is the after. <laughs> Yay, it's done. And I'm so happy with it. It feels like way, way, way more us. So the series shelf has pretty much stayed the same, except Maddie has highlighted her favorite series, Cinder. And then we've also highlighted the selection, um, which is integral to Maddie and me. And then everything else has been kept together and we've grouped authors together too. Um, this is still our adult shelf with more space to expand there. Uh, and then we have our contemporary shelves. So we've reorganized these by tone. So the first shelf is like a silly fun um, series, lighthearted things. Then up to about here is the slightly whimsical, odd, maybe sci-fi or fantasy-esque um, contemporaries. And here we have all of our thrillers. And then on this shelf is a highlight of our favorite books. The covers are so stunning on all of them. So we were like, let's just display the lot. And then we have the sentimental books, which is our favourite genre. And then we have a bit more of that, although it gets like maybe a bit more gritty with the UK YA stuff. So this is more like Sweet Summer Day and this is like sentimental. You'll probably cry reading this. Yeah, in your feelings. In your feelings shelf. <laughs> and this is an in your feelings shelf too, really. This is our Rochelle Mead shelf. So we have all of Vampire Academy, Bloodlines and Soundless there, mm. Ugly Water Crossing shelf. Then we've got um, Twilight books from a reread. Right, well, that went better than I ever thought it would be then. <laughs> That's 80 books taken off these shelves. I can't believe it. And now I'm really looking forward to rearranging them. <laughs>
Now we can actually put the books that we've had hidden yes. on the main shelves yes, and still true. see books that we love. Um, I feel like we should have ballparked the figure before we started the video because yeah, I definitely I would have said 80. No. I, I don't even think I would have said 50 because when you were counting them when we were halfway through I was like how is it already 50? <laughs> so hopefully that's the end of unhauling for us for a while but we say that at the end of every, every unhaul single video. Unhaul. I, maybe the point is not to hold ourselves to keeping all of these books but just constantly reassessing. Thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you in our next video. Suddenly I see Polka dots and blue